Gibbs, his name is in a song. <laughs> Matt Gibbs is in the studio right now. Matt is the uh, owner of uh, Sunrise Automotive. He's also the owner of Crossroad Auto Sales, and I am a customer of both the mechanic division and the auto sales division. <laughs> I'm a customer of both. And uh, the show is called Auto Repair with Personal Care, and your questions are an important part of the show, so call if you have a question or just want to contribute to the conversation. The number is 622 Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Larry. How you doing? Good. How's your family? Everybody all right? Yep, everybody's doing okay. And Tokyo was talking about the 2020 Olympics. I was thinking about your son, Joey. Oh, is that where it's going to be? Well, it sounds like it. The way they're talking about it, they, they, they took bowling out of the list. They don't want bowling in, in their, their Olympics for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Huh. That's disappointing to the bowlers, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll be cool. Uh, so it'd be cool because you'll be going there. Yes. So you didn't know it was going to be Tokyo? No, I didn't. No. Oh. I even asked the. Uh, I, I, I'm in pretty close contact with the, some of the folks from the USOC, and and you know that was something I've never asked. Let me make sure I have it right. Where is the 2020 Olympics? Let me make sure. I, I, I mean, I know I read an article this morning. Yeah, Tokyo. All right. Tokyo is the host of the 2020 Summer Olympic Games. Yeah, that, find out where the 2018 Pan American Games are going to be. 2018 Pan American. Pan American Games. Oh, uh, 2018? Yeah. Okay, it says 2019 here. Hold okay, on. Okay, 2019. Oh, it could be 2019? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Calls for bids to host the comp- competitions period 2015 through 2018, but that's hockey only, Pan American hockey. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. 2018. Hold on. I think it said Toronto for 19. Uh, okay, that's where, the, that's where they were this, this year. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, 2000, oh, yeah, 2015, Toronto, 2019 Pan American Games were uh, the 18th Pan American Games. So it's 2019, but it's the 18th one. Right. Maybe that's the thing. Scheduled to be in Lima, Peru. Lima, Peru. July 26th through August 11th, 2019 in Lima, Peru. So you, you are definitely going to that one, right? Yeah. Do you, do you know anything about Lima? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you like their beans? I think they make some nice beans. <laughs> Those are lima beans. I know. <laughs> 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 they don't taste lima. Uh, hmm. That's a nice, nice looking logo they got there. I don't know what it is. It's okay. A, it's a big splotch of something. So my car is work, working nice. Yeah. Everybody, everybody loves my car. Everybody looks at my car and says, "Hey, that's going to be my next car." Make it their next car. <laughs> oh, you want me to sell it? Sell the thing. That'd be the shortest period I ever owned a car if I sold it. I usually own cars until they d- they're done. Yeah, I, I, I'm or I hit a cow. Right. One coming, yeah. one or the other. Well, that made it done. You hit a cow, and it's all over. Do you, know, you want to hear a funny thing that happened after hitting the cow? What's that? I, I didn't tell you this, but when we went to the hospital, I mean, everybody I tell about hitting the cow kind of finds it funny. It's uh, it's almost like a joke. Okay, but the doctor. Who comes in with the clipboard? He's f- from India. He's an Indian. Oh, I know. So he's looking at things. He says, "You hit the cow," <laughs> <laughs> and I felt so bad. I meant to tell you this. That I, I thought, "Oh, geez, this is an important animal to them." I don't, you know. I hope I'm okay with that. <laughs> did he? Did he? Did he? Kick, was he concerned about your health and well-being? You know, this is the interesting thing. <laughs> this is, I, I, okay, not that I wanted to take my pants off, <laughs> but I didn't take my pants off. And that's probably a good okay. thing. And he was feeling my legs through my pants, just, I mean, the lower from the knee down, okay, just so you know. Okay. Gave me a prescription for some pain, and then, like a week later, I get a $600 bill, or is it $800 bill? Less than 1000 I know that. Because my deductible is a thousand, so I said, "Wow, that guy just earned eight hundred dollars for coming in, telling me what I already knew. You hit a cow. That's what he told me. <laughs> Feeling my leg through my pants. Wow, it's a, not a bad job, huh? No, that's a pretty good gig right there. Yeah. 
No, I mean, no X rays, no nothing. Not me. No, Robin had an e. What do you call it? EKG, whatever. A CAT scan. CAT scan. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know what they are. I don't, I don't know what her bill's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be way more than that. I but mean, the point is, if you hit something. a cow and it's an Indian doctor, whoo, that's, that's like, oh, gosh, it could have been anybody but an Indian doctor. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I, I don't think he cared, to be honest with you. You should have told me he hit a horse. It said it on the paper. Uh-oh. So he had no cho- I had no choice. I, I was thinking about that. I should lie. <laughs> <laughs> I hit a deer. I hit a horse. You hit the cow. You hit the cow. It says you hit the cow. Uh, We're going to fix it and get in some trouble because I almost said something that probably wouldn't have been a very good thing. But right. I'm not saying it. Let's just, let's just move on. <laughs> uh, the phone number, if you want to call Matt to find out for yourself, is 622 if you can persuade him to say it on the air. No, no. Last time, I, last time we talked about something we shouldn't have been talking about, Joe comes running in the <laughs> office. <laughs> he writes his notes. <laughs> yes, I remember that time. That's exactly right. Yeah, that was kind of funny, wasn't it? That's worse than going to the principal's office. So the, office. New, the new car I have from you is a, ninth, is a 2001 Chrysler Sebring. Convertible. Convertible. You have to say the convertible. Is there with a brand new engine, mm-hmm. and it works beautifully. I love it, and, and I'm taking it to Chattanooga on Wednesday. Okay, packing it up with the accordion, the mandolin, and a bunch of other junk, because we have a ten by ten square. We don't know what to decorate it with, so Robin's got some ideas. So there you go. And this is like a promotion. For people to be able to come and see you guys perform and play to hire you to come and perform and play. For the French cafes. Yeah, there's a specific thing that we're, re- okay. we're demonstrating. But you perform and play in all kinds of settings and, and arenas. Well, no, no, just coffee houses. Just coffee houses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or like, or <laughs> no arena would take. <laughs> well, I didn't mean. I didn't mean like twenty people in an arena <laughs> looks really bad. <laughs> twenty people in a coffee house looks all right. Okay. Well, I didn't mean an arena as in <laughs> an actual arena, uh, just in that kind of setting. But if someone wanted to do a birthday party or yeah, well, colleges specifically is what this is okay. for. Okay. Yeah, that's what this is for. So you're 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 performing to the millenniums. We got two hours per day, not together. So we have an hour, and then I think two hours in between, and then another hour on next Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Okay. The rest of the time, I can walk around eating all their ethnic foods. Oh. Because that's, that's what the whole thing is. Don't eat no cow. Oh, I guarantee you I will. <laughs> oh, what, if, what if the doctor heard that you ate, <laughs> ate a cow? <laughs> I guarantee you. It's probably the only meat I'm okay with. <laughs> Except for chicken. Have you ever hit a chicken? Do you ever see, do you ever see in, the, in these movies, like the, they, it's always like a cool scene. Like the, the jeep comes into a... Brrr, just comes running into a place and chickens scatter everywhere. Yeah. I always wonder, how do they... I mean, do they ever have an outtake where they hit one? They probably, well, if they did, they'd probably get in trouble. Yeah. For the Chicken Association of America. Yeah, you ain't lying. I, I, I don't think I've ever hit a chicken. I, I haven't ever, I haven't hit very many animals. <sighs> Me either. If my wife's in the car, I ain't, I'm not going to hit an animal. Because I'll crash my I car. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to jinx it. But I've, I've only hit, so I am talking about it. <laughs> It's a radio show. I got to talk. I, I've hit a. I think I've hit a squirrel. I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah, pretty sure I've hit an armadillo, and a cow. I, th- I think that's it. I think that's my entire repertoire. Now, now, one time I was driving through the forest in a state car because I worked for the state for a while, and I rolled up the window. I rolled up the window, and as soon as I put the window up, a bird flew right into the window. It would have hit me if I didn't roll the window up. That was a good. That was a good coincidence, right? Yeah. Although no, I, I have hit a bird f- head on, and then th- th- there's feathers everywhere. Have you ever seen? Have you yes, ever done I've this? I've done that. We'll be right back. We haven't talked about cars really, except for hitting animals with them. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Variable cloudiness today with a couple of showers and a heavier thunderstorm arriving in the afternoon along the coast. The high today, 84 to 88. We're tonight mostly cloudy with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm around those 72 to 76. For tomorrow, more clouds and sun with a shower and heavy thunderstorm or two, high 84 to 88. And for Wednesday, mostly cloudy with a shower and thunderstorm or two, high 85 to 89. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results. And all but given up on my sex life. Then, I found the doctors at New Male Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Male treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Male will help you. Call New Male Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. All right, 17 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Matt Gibbs is here. We're talking about cars, or at least we're supposed to be talking about cars. Matt is the owner of Sunrise Automotive, which is where I go to get my car fixed, and Crossroad Auto Sales, which is where I purchased the car after my car was no longer drivable. And, of course, the show is called Auto Repair with Personal Care. Your phone calls are important. The number is 622-9622. There was an article this morning that I was going to use for a game talking about the, the, the brands of cars, the models that were around in the 1900s, the early part of the 20th century. And I was surprised at some of them. I, I didn't realize uh, that some of the names we still know today were around back then. Mm-hmm. And then there was a lot that... Some that disappeared. Even, yeah, and we've never even, I've never even heard of. Oh, there was a few I never heard of, but I would, I would think that you had heard of them because no. you know cars. Yeah, no... I'm not I'm not a historian and automobile historian and stuff, but you know I find them interesting when I see them and stuff. And speaking of the cars and and, and old cars like that, you know I just want to throw out my my good friend John Duggan is putting on the the, the pumpkin run right right, and that's coming up in in at the end of October, and it's it'll be the fifth year of the Ocala Pumpkin Run. And it's going to be a really neat show. He's got a lot of stuff going on out there. Matt, you have a phone call coming in. Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Good morning, guys. Morning. Uh, I, sorry, I have a, a Ford F-350 with a 6.4 diesel in it. Okay. Uh, 2008. And it, it gets really poor fuel mileage. I'm getting uh, if, if I nurse it, I get 12.4 uh, miles to a gallon combined. And even on the highway... At 65 miles an hour, I'm only getting 14. Um, I put a chip in it, and I think it. I don't think it really did any uh, any help. Is there anything I can do about this? Um, it's a 2008. I'm gonna. Do you know what you're supposed to get? I mean, what I, is I it? I'm I'm punching it up on my uh, on my computer as we speak. And what I want to do is real quick. I just want to see what what you're supposed to be getting as far as fuel economy on that particular vehicle. Um, what kind of chip did you put in it? Oh gosh, it was a couple of years ago. Um, I don't remember. It just had two wires that it connected to underneath the hood. Oh, okay. And um, I I think it's more uh, psychosomatic than anything else because it said to give the chip a couple of weeks to. Uh, to really get involved with the engine and during that time to sort of nurse the fuel pedal which I think just you know <laughs> that alone is sort of yeah that's that's a bunch of bogus <laughs> stuff right there is yeah. this is this four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive uh it's four-wheel drive 
It is, is a super cab? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, you might want to go online. It's, it's not even giving me miles per gallon on my computer on that particular vehicle. What you might want to do is go actually go on online and look up uh, the uh, go to Super Super Chip, and it's actually a programmer um, where you actually go in and reprogram the computer. Now, typically when we install these this particular device, most of our customers on a diesel truck are getting about four miles to the gallon better fuel economy. Okay. And it's more than just a couple of wires, and, and and there's no telling what they're you know if they're messing around with the mass airflow or or what they're doing. But the micro tuner actually goes in and reprograms the computer itself, and it's something that you get to keep. And if 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 that company if the, if Superchip comes out with a new modified program, you can buy a programmer where you can hook it up with a USB port, go right on their website, and then you can you can buy that, that new update right from them, and you can just download it onto the actual, they'll send you it like a scan tool, and then you can download that information onto your, on your tool and go right out to your truck and, and, and give it a new updated version of what micro, uh, what microchip um, comes up with. Oh, so is this um, sort of device that plugs into that analyzer port underneath the yes. steering wheel? Yes. Yep. It goes straight into the OB2 connector, and and you can reprogram it, unplug it, put it in. You can change your shift patterns. You can change all kind, all sorts of things to customize the way that your truck runs just for you. Okay. It's really it, something that you could do also. Oh yeah, if if you wanted to bring it by, I can order it for you. I can, or if you wanted to buy it, I can install it for you. That wouldn't be a problem. Okay, I'll stop by. It sounds like uh, I like to work with the experts rather than reinventing the wheel. Yeah, me too. Messing things up a lot. Yeah, that's no problem, and and it really will, it really will change the way that the truck runs. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much. You've been a help. You're welcome. Wow, I wouldn't even know where to begin on as far as how would I want to customize my own car. I didn't even realize you could do that kind of thing. I have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Uh, good morning, Matt. This is Sonny calling. Hey, Sonny. Can you do that with a uh, transmission in a uh, car? Um, you, if, if the programming available for that car has to do with transmission shifting, you can. Uh, it, but to be honest with you, just if you want to do it just for the transmission side of it, it's quite a it, you know it, it'd be an expensive thing to do to to change the way your transmission shifts. Well, the reason why I ask is sometimes if I'm especially at highway speed, you hit a hill, the thing will downshift from overdrive into the next uh, lower gear. Normally, you should do that, but a lot of times it'll just drop down two gears, and the next thing you know, the RPMs are up around 6,000 RPM for crying a lot, and that I don't think is uh, normal. Well, here's the thing, though: the the computer really senses the load of what of of what the uh, the computer really senses the load of things, okay? And it's and the computer says if it if it's under a certain parameter, if it's doing a certain thing, if there's X amount of load on the engine, then the computer will, regardless regardless if you reprogram it or not, the computer's still going to operate the same way, and it may do the very same thing. The other thing is, a lot of times people say that it's downshifting, and it's really not downshifting. You're you have a lockup torque converter in your transmission and what a lot of people feel is it sh it's it's uh lowering a, a a gear it's not lowering a gear it's unlocking the torque converter and um if you're if and and way to the way you can actually feel this is if you're driving down let's say you're going down the interstate and you're staying at a real steady speed and you take your left foot and just lightly touch the brake pedal it'll almost feel like the transmission just shifted well, it's not the transmission. It 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 didn't sh shift. The torque converter just disengaged. And a, so a lot of people kind of get you know that confused with it keeps dropping a gear. No, it's not dropping a gear. The torque converter disengaged itself. It unlocked because the computer saw that it needed to have a little bit.
more power, your your load, the the load ratio is getting a little bit too high. I I understand. As I'm just dropping out of overdrive or or just disengaging, this thing drops down two gears and uh, it's like dropping into seventy, you know, seventy miles an hour. That engine just will start screaming. And to me, there's something wrong with the engine. Has no torque at all, or uh, there's something wrong with the transmission. And I think uh, the uh, motor is. Uh, works fine because it'll uh, it'll actually stay in gear when you're going up a slight hill doing about 45. What 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 car what kind of car is this? That's the Vibe 2005 Vibe. Well, let me ask you this. If you on on uh, on that 2005 Vibe, if you go out there and just leave it in park and hit the gas, hit the accelerator pedal to rev re, to rev up the engine, it should hit its a rev limiter. It should go dat dat dat. You know the the computer. Yeah, right. So if so if you're actually driving, and if you're going if you've exceeded what the engine would allow you to rev, it would go into the rev limiter even driving down the road. Right. So I, it should. I understand it, it what sh- you're saying, but uh, you know, just to me, it's more like the transmission is uh, messing up. But anyway, uh, I think the best deal would be to either bring it into you again and see what happens. But uh, I don't know what else to say. This is a, it's more annoying than anything else. Plus, I don't like the idea that all of a sudden we're doing 6,000 RPM when you're normally doing about half that if, if at, at 70 miles an hour. Yeah, I would like to drive that and see because it should never go to 6,000 RPM. All right. <clears throat> all right. All uh, right. We'll talk to you then. I'll see you. Okay. Right. I know. That's the good idea. Go bring it to the shop. That would scare me if it was revving that high. That would be really scary because I don't know what I'm listening to. It's like when you work on the car and, and you're doing something under the hood and just goes high. I'm always worried that something's going to fly out at you. <laughs> it doesn't, no. No. Hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> Nothing ever has, it, right? Well, you know, no, it, it has. There has been something. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's been things that... I've seen seen I've seen some crazy things fling out of from underneath the hood of a car. Oh man! Uh, the uh, we got two more minutes left. What is your phone number at uh, at your shop? You can call me at Sunrise Automotive. Our phone number is three five two six nine zero one nine nine three. And if you wanted to call us at Crossroad, you can call us at three five two six nine zero six six nine five. The same phone rings. The same phone rings. You answer either way, right? Or Philip answers, or, or uh, what's the lady's name? Young lady? Chrissy. 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 Do, do you know, uh, th- there was a movie made about, is it the, the Hudson that had a third mm-hmm, headlight? Mm-hmm. And the third headlight turned as you turned the steering wheel, right? Was that annoying to have to fix that thing? I don't know. Oh, you never, don't know? I never fixed one of them things. But because it didn't take off. It didn't. It doesn't seem necessary, does it? Well, it, a lot of the new cars, they're doing the same thing. Oh, they are? Yeah, the headlights move as you turn. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Huh. So they figured out a way to do it because the, there was problems with that one, I yeah, think. Yeah, th- that was probably a mechanical you know, thing. Do you know, by the way, Dan showed me how to turn on those. I have lower lights on the front of the car that he's holding. The fog lights. Yeah, but they don't come on. But he, but he showed me how to turn them on. Yeah, they don't come on unless you turn them on, and they only come on. <laughs> they only come on on low beams. They don't come on on high beams. Do they come on though? I couldn't. We couldn't get them to come on. They, yeah, I th- I'll have to look and see. They hmm. came on the other day. They were on. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You pull out on the thing, right? On the little Prenendle thing. Yeah. On the headlight switch. <laughs> on the headlight switch. <laughs> but it has to. You got to make sure that the low beams are on because it's it's against the law to run fog lights with the high beams. Well, it's not. I don't know if it's against the law. It de- de- defeats the purpose. Oh, okay. Okay. So I had fog the other day. I'm, I should have used them. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Larry. You have a great week. Drive safely. Don't hit any animals. No. What are you doing? I'm knocking on this granite. Oh, okay. I thought you were trying to get that guy's attention. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matt. See ya.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source.